I'm going to bring up the last example we had last time and talk about it a bit and review before we go on to our next topic. I want to bring up Tuesday 2. We'll look at both of them real quick. Is this your book? Yes, it is. Okay. Yeah, it's just what I think. Okay. Oh, heck is breaking loose in class. <laughs> I tell you. That's okay. That's okay. We. Oh. I wouldn't know anything about that, but uh, let's see. Okay. One thing I mentioned. This is a good good time as any to mention. Every once in a while, I'll get a uh, I'll get a, a, a student that says I created some CSS. I have some images, etc. But when I view my page, I can't see the CSS or I can't see the images or whatever. All right. You got to remember that if you put it in a compressed file, uh, that is a zip file, you can open up each file, but that file really isn't there. Everything is crammed into that zip file, and therefore it can't find any associated files. So I actually briefly wondered what was going on because I opened up this. Spring.html, and if you remember, this was the one with the ugly CSS from last time. Plus, it doesn't show the picture where it should. All right. So if you have something like that happen, remember you can't open it up from the zip file. If you see extract, then you have to click extract to extract the zip file. That will do it, and then you can open up that page. And then you see this. All right. Remember, this was done just simply to illustrate techniques. Uh, it's not meant to be a well-designed page. Um, I'm going to go and I'll, I'll make some tweaks to maybe make a, a better version of this page. All right. First thing I will do will be I'm going to get rid of the transparency, which in some cases can give a good solution, but in this case really didn't give the solution that I was looking for. Uh, I will then also say header, nav, section, footer. I'll give it a background white. By separating by commas, you can put a multiple things for the selector, so each of these things gets this rule. Then I'm going to do this. I'm going to say margin 0px auto, and I'll give a width of 60%. 60% is just a number I picked off the top of my head. When I do that, I get this. All right. I think that's a little bit better. I, I kind of felt bad where the state that we left that page because it, it was ugly. All right. And uh, again, so this I think looks a lot better. All right. Let's review what I did. Again, I gave for each of these things a width of 60%. You can express the width either as an absolute number of pixels or you can express it as a percentage. Typically, percentage is preferred. 
because that allows you to resize your window and have the, the area of the screen resized. But I could say with 600 pixels. This isn't going to look that much different because it's about 1,000 pixels wide. So it doesn't really look that much different. But if I keep it, it stays at that width, whereas if I make the width 60%, Uh, then as I resize the window, that gets smaller. Now one thing you can do with this is you can give a minimum width. And that oftentimes is useful because, you know, to make it 60%, that's fine and good at normal size windows. But if the window gets too small, it's just one column and... Yeah, I don't know how that looks. So I can go and give a minimum width and assign that a certain size. So maybe minimum width, let's give it 150 pixels and see how that goes. Let's try 250 pixels. <coughs> So it's 60%, it'll get smaller, get smaller, get smaller, but at a certain point it won't get any smaller. Now when we talk about margins and stuff, we could do some things to pretty this up even a little bit more. Uh, one thing that you will note though, and again, it's not a huge deal now, but if you go and look and view this on a mobile device, show you what you will look like on that kind of screen or that kind of screen. So we can probably tweak this a little bit to make it look a little bit better. All right. The other one, what was the other one? We had a pattern. And this isn't the best pattern in the world because you can see a tiny little seam there in the pattern, all right? But it pretty much forms a, a block, all right? Uh, if you don't specify otherwise, the pattern that you have, the background image that you have as a pattern, will tile. That is, it will repeat both horizontally and vertically, all right? Uh, I'm going to pick just for the heck of it another tile. So let me look up CSS background tiles and let's find a better one. being so particular here. Oh yeah, there's there's actually tons of options. If I just find the right page.
actually a generator. And I can put some parameters in. I'm having no luck with this today. I give up. Let's download this guy. All right, there we go. This one will do the trick. Maybe my birthday's in the spring, so this one will be used for that. So I'm going to bring it into the same folder as my other stuff. That's the assumption for everything that we're doing so far. I'll paste that in there. I need to change the CSS to say edit with notepad and this is a PNG file. So I'll change it to pattern PNG. And then we'll view that again. There actually are programs to generate a pattern and uh, where you could go and you can select symbols and colors and stuff like that and it will generate uh, the pattern for you. But notice how this pattern interlocks, right? The image of the balloon, if you notice, the top of the balloon is over here the side of the balloon is over here, and the bottom of the balloon is over here. So just by virtue of the fact that the way these are stacked together next to each other, it doesn't look like it is tiles. They blend seamlessly. All right. Uh, that, that was the point I was trying to get. The other example was kind of not really good for that because you could obviously see where the seam was uh, because it was actually a photograph instead of an image. But there, there, are, there is code that allows you to generate uh, patterns. Uh, and uh, CSS pattern generator. The ones I found didn't look good, but maybe you can find, have better luck uh, with that. Um, there we go. We could pick the kind of stripe that we want. All right, the colors of the stripe. Stripe size. Oh, got to hit refresh. There you go. And then you can download this and you can use it if, if that would be of good for you. Again, the way this works is really for decoration, where you sort of have it sort of peeking out from behind your content. 
it's a good way to add a little bit of life to your page and sort of create a bit of a mood without having an actual important image. Um, the way this is done, I would think you could even put text on top of it because it's primarily very light colors. You could probably put text on top of it and uh, have it appear correctly. Let's just for the heck of it go in and let's remove the background of white. Pretty readable for that, especially if you made the font maybe a little bit bigger. So this is good for that kind of thing. So we'll leave it. We'll leave this example like that, so you can refer to. Now the other thing that I talked about. This is a very common thing. Is I've given a width of a certain percentage, which you can either give a percentage or an absolute pixels, and I've said margin zero and auto. We'll talk more about the margins later on, but essentially what that does is that centers each block. All right. So it does the automatic on the left and the right, and by setting a, mat a pattern automatically on the left and right, it sets it even, and therefore it's centered. All right. So that's a nice way to do that. And again, notice, you know, this is starting to look like a decent page, right? But notice how it didn't take tons of work to sort of elevate this from the kind of page that we had a week or so ago to this. You know, this looks much closer to a professionally designed web page than the stuff that we did before. And all we did was just take a little bit without and sort of create a bit of care with this you can really elevate your pages it is uh, you know it, it is so cool to see students that take this and run with this in other words take something that we go over in class and maybe expand it and re do more more research on it and and do some really good designs because some students do some really really good designs. so so don't be lazy put forth a little bit of effort you make a little bit more effort it'll make your pages look way better all right. Okay. Any questions about anything we did in either of these two examples? Remember, these examples contain all the stuff that we learned before as far as links, lists, header, nav, section, images which we talked about recently, and several CSS things. Any questions over any of this? Let me find a new pattern. So I can give credit. this one better for spring. So let's download that one. Now there's sort of a conflict with the text, so I'll go and I'll put the white background back. There, that's a pretty nice spring website, web page. All right, and the background image I'll put in the footer where it came from. All right, so you have two <coughs> assignments. Um, besides your weekly labs, there's two assignments that are sort of uh, ongoing throughout the semester. And we're going to talk about, we're going to talk about those two over the next few classes. 
Uh, we're going to start out talking about the portfolio, because in some respects, that's the simpler of the two assignments. All right? So we'll talk about the portfolio. We will then talk about the project. But before we talk about the project, we'll spend a little bit of time talking about web design. All right? Uh, web development is a combination of sort of technical skills that you have and design skills. It's sort of like your right arm and your left arm, right? And Ideally, you want both ends to be strong and to be workable. Um, the fact is, is that very rare for an individual to be equally strong with technical skills and design skills. Usually, your, your, your preference or your ability sort of points you in one direction or the other. But whatever it is, you should be able to do a passable job at the other thing, do a good job at the other thing. So you may not be the best coding wizard, but then maybe your design skills compensate for that. Or you might not have the best design skills, but you really are a technical uh, guru. But either way, you should be able to do a passable job at both things. All right? So um, you should be able to create a design that looks good. Might not be an award-winning design, but if you have sort of that programming background and all that, your design should at least be good, serviceable, and not having any problems associated with them. All right, so we'll talk about web design, then we'll go into the project. So this is kind of the preview of the next week and a half, or maybe two weeks of class. Go talk about the portfolio today. Uh, maybe start talking about web design. We'll talk more about web design next week, then we'll talk about the project. All right, so that's probably the next two weeks worth of classes, or, or week and a half of classes. All right, portfolio, all right? Uh, people create portfolios for all kinds of reasons, all right? Uh, what are some of the reasons people create portfolios for? To get a job. All right, one is to market themselves, all right? Is, uh, in fact, you'll see a lot of graphic designers that create portfolios. And that's a great thing of uh, portfolios now with the web is you actually can put it online and you can send someone a link to it right on your resume if you want. Where in the past, the portfolio was literally a big folder with a bunch of documents in it, all right? And you would take cart that around. Whereas with this, you can actually put it out on the web and people can view it. Let's go and let's look for some good graphic design portfolio. So I'm going to Google graphic, or I'll Google web design portfolios. All right. Let's look at this one. Start, look at this person's. All right, hello, intro, skills, works, lab, about, and contact. So hello, they sort of have a little tag on there, intros. An introduction. Skills. Interesting way to put your skills. Works. Here's some examples of what they did. an experiment of something that they did. All right. Let's look at another example. I didn't hit, I was supposed to hit the back spare button and I hit the, I closed the tab instead.
this is showcasing their skills as doing animation. Contact me, what I do, about me. All right, this is, this is the kind that I was thinking more of. They're all good examples for what they wanted to show, but view live website. You can click this, and this is a website that they actually worked on. All right, and so on. So Portfolio does what? It introduces you to, in many cases, prospective employers. Now, within an educational context, portfolios are a nice way for you to sort of reflect back on what you've learned and think about it. Think about what was hard, what was easy, how you do things over. You know, you might look at one of your labs at, by the end of the semester and say, well, you know, for the time I did a good job on it, but if I was doing it now, I would have done it this way. All right? It's a way to sort of document your learning. You know, I can look at it and you can look at it and say, Wow, look at the progress I made. Here's the very first web page I did, which is very simplistic, basic, and so on, to here's my final project. All right? So we're sort of giving you a practice to make a portfolio that you could use to market yourself, but also want to keep that reflective aspect to the portfolio. So what should you do on your portfolio? You should have a main portfolio page, at least one. You could have a couple, all right? You could have a couple, like... You notice some of these have a, uh, a home page, they have an about me page, a works page, contact me. You can put all that on one page if you want. You can put a short paragraph about yourself, uh, how to contact you if you want to put that information, like an email address or whatever. And then you would have samples of your work. Well, in this class, the samples of your work are the assignments that you've done. So you'd create a portfolio home page. You'd have a paragraph introducing yourself, maybe talking about your experiences in the class, and then you would have sample of the work that you've done in class, along with your reflections on the assignment. Now, again, you, looking back, you can think about how you have done it differently. What's something that you struggled with? What was something that was really easy? What you liked, what you didn't like about it? So let me take a couple examples of how we would do this. Let me take a couple of my examples. In fact, I'll do this. This folder here. I'll pretend this is lab one. And I'll pretend this is lab two. So I'm just pretending, right? These aren't actual lab ones and lab twos. And we're going to make this my portfolio folder. So what you're going to do is you are going to create a portfolio folder. Have a folder for each of your labs inside of that portfolio folder. So I think your portfolio is due after lab six, I think. All right? So you'll have portfolio, you'll have folders lab one through lab six. You'll then make a portfolio home page, all right? And that will look something like this. Let me go in a notepad. I am probably going to call it index.html. HTML. And I'll save it in my portfolio folder. I'm going to copy and paste some HTML code so I don't have to do this from scratch.
please, if you take my code and do your thing based off of my example, change it enough so that I don't recognize it. All right? That's all I ask. It's a small favor. Thank you. I'm going to do the shell of, of this first, and then we'll come in and we'll fill in the details. second I thought wow that's brave of me putting my phone number but that's my school phone number so. Here's what my portfolio looks like. All right, I have a heading, I have Greek text, I have my navigation with something that isn't right, and I have links to my lab one and lab two, and then I have a footer down here. All right, so let's go and let's make sure, oh, I forgot the text between the link tags. All right, so I'm going to have in each section a link to the respective labs. Now, if you notice, I broke the rule, sort of, that I said we were playing by for the first part of the semester, where I said everything's in the same folder, because everything isn't in the same folder. Lab 1 is in a subfolder underneath the portfolio folder, and it's called spring.html. All right, lab two is in a lab two folder and it's called spring.html. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create the link to lab one and lab two. And I'm going to put the URL as being the folder name slash and then the name of the HTML page. So if it's in a folder underneath my current folder, I'm going to put the folder name, a slash, and then the web page name. If it's two folders deep, you'd put the two folders names. Three folders, put three folders. So if you're going down from your current folder to a subfolder, you put a list of the folders that the file is in, and then finally you end with the name of the HTML page. A couple things. This will not start with a slash at the beginning. All right? It will not start with a slash at the beginning. This assumes that whatever your current folder is in, that lab1 is a subfolder of that current folder. The other thing is, is that it will always be a forward slash, even if you're on a Windows system. Uh, many of you that may have done CISS 125 operating systems know that in Windows you typically use backslashes to indicate directory names or folder names. You never, you, you, the web world is different than Windows or Unix or Linux or any other operating system. You always use forward slashes. Okay? And then lab two would be just about the same. Except you use the folder for that, lab2 spring.html. 
So now if we go and view the page, here is lab one. I click on it, I go to that page. That takes me to those sections. Yes? Now, when it comes to like the here is lab one, you, you could also put an image in that too, so where you click the image. You could put an image of that. You could take a screenshot of what that page looks like and put that there okay. or whatever. All right. Now, the other thing that you want to do is you want to create a link back to the portfolio page. So if I click this, I go back, I go to the, my lab one. We're pretending this is lab one. I need to get back to the portfolio page. So what I would recommend you doing, and you only need to do this for really one page per lab, whatever your page is, whatever your lab's home page is, all right, go in and put a link back to the portfolio home page. So in this case, I'm going to, in the header, I'm going to put a link dot dot slash index.html. When do we use the dot dot? When we're going up a directory. When we go up a directory, we do dot dot. If we went up two directories, we do dot dot slash dot dot. So to go down a directory, we use a directory name or the folder name. To go up a folder, we use dot dot. The reason for that is any folder could have a bunch of folders inside of it. So if you want to go down to a subfolder, you have to specify the name of the subfolder you want to go to. If, however, you are going up to the parent folder, the folder above it, each folder can only be contained in one folder. So you don't have to say the name of the folder above it. You just say dot, dot. That'll take you to whatever the parent is. And you can say back to portfolio home. So now we can go into our portfolio. We can go to lab one, and we can go back to portfolio home. You don't have to worry too much about the styling of that portfolio link, as long as it's visible. All right, because that's sort of something that you've like added on extra. That's not part of the original assignment. But you should be able to go back and forth between this. And then we'll do the exact same thing for lab two. two, and then link back to the portfolio home. Now, what is your page going to look like? You should probably have a nav that goes to the write-ups for each section. So your page is going to consist of an introductory paragraph. That's what this is. It's going to be a little bit about yourself and your overall experiences in the class. Let me go and put that in. have links to the write-ups for each of the labs. 
Each write-up is going to consist of, again, your observations about the lab and a link to it. a link to it. And then have that for every lab that you have turned in. Again, in the first case, I think it's labs one through six, but you can see that on Canvas. Whatever labs you've completed, you have that. Essentially, you're making one new pages and you're putting a couple of tweaks on the labs that you've already turned in uh, to include the link back to the portfolio. What if you don't have a copy of the labs you've turned in? First of all, you should. Thumb drives aren't that expensive these days. You can email it to yourself, whatever. And it's, it's important to have backups. What if I had accident, what if I accidentally deleted an assignment? I hit the wrong button or whatever, I deleted your submission. You should be able to upload it again. But I normally don't delete stuff, so if you don't have a copy of it, you should be able to download what you've turned in from Canvas. <coughs> and I can help you with that if you need. Now, this page, of course, you're going to want to style at least some way. And I'm not going to spend a lot of time styling it, but again, this is another good chance for you to show off your web development skills. Imagine, this is your home page of your portfolio. Do you want it to look ugly? You shouldn't. All right. If you're going to use this for potential uh, uh, job leads and, again, to show what you've learned, well, you're going to want your page to look good. So you should do some making the CSS look good. So. I'll go and just really quickly put together some basic CSS here. I'm not going to spend a lot of time doing the CSS for this because we only have a couple minutes of class left, but I'm just going to make a little bit of effort to show that I would make this look nice. moving in the direction of, of looking okay. And again, if I were to spend more time on it, I'd make it look even better still. So, you will at least have this one new page that you create. It will be linked to all your lab assignments. All your lab assignments will be altered to link back to this, following the directions that I have. Remember, to link down a folder, you put the name of the folder or folders, separated by forward slashes, and then finally the file name. To link upward, you would use the dot dot to go up to the parent folder to show that. All right. Uh, now you could include other pages if you wanted to. If you wanted to do a home page that maybe had more extensive a biography, then have a page of sample work and then have a third page for contacts. You're welcome to do that. That's more in line with the way a traditional portfolio would look. But if you only have one page, that's fine as well. All right, that is a portfolio. Once you do that, once you finish an assignment, adding it to the portfolio should only take literally a matter of 10 minutes. All right, 10, 15 minutes to do that. A little bit of time to think about it, reflect it, create the link, 
make sure it links back and you should be set. So there'll be a little bit of time up front to create your portfolio homepage, style it to look good, you use everything you've learned to make it look good, and then link all your pages to it. So that's what you'll turn in as a portfolio. Let me pull up Canvas real quick so I remember when it's due and all that kind of stuff. It is due, the first draft of the portfolio is due March 14th. All right. That is. Let me look at the syllabus. That is after Lab 6. So it's, it's due the week before spring break. All right. That's easy. And it should contain all the labs that you've done so far. And there'll be six of them. All right. Any questions on this? Okay, Monday, we will not do anything because we don't have class on Mondays. Tuesday, we'll discuss web design, basic web design principles, and that discussion will lead into a discussion of your semester project. All right, so we'll take a day or two on that, and then we'll go and have even more fun with CSS than you could possibly imagine. All right, we'll see you over in lab. I will go over to the lab, I'll come back to grab my files, and then I'll be back in lab.